It's back to beasts for this week's episode for a look at the Transformers franchise's first great female villain. It's the basics on Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Woman Black Arachnia and all that she's inspired. Released in 1996 as part of the first year of the Beast Wars toy line, Black Arachnia was the very first female Transformers figure sold by Hasbro in toy stores. With her Black Widow Spider alternate mode, she was appropriately characterized as an evil Predacon femme fatale. Her toy was a recolored version of the Predacon Tarantulas, released earlier that same year. But when Black Arachnia was adapted into the Beast Wars animated series, she was redesigned to look very different from Tarantulas, gaining a famously voluptuous figure courtesy of a character designer reportedly inspired by an Asian exotic dancer. In the Beast Wars cartoon, Black Arachnia was created by the Predacons from a protoform stolen from the heroic Maximals and reprogrammed for evil. A skilled fighter and talented inventor, Black Arachnia was also possessed of ruthless ambition and seductive cunning. She wrapped other Predacons around her little finger and conspired with fellow spider Tarantulas on various schemes behind Megatron's back for their own gain. Though the two mutually despised one another, so their alliances usually ended in betrayal. In the second season of the cartoon, Black Arachnia encountered the chivalrous Maximal Silverbolt, and thus was born one of the all-time great Transformers love stories. Opposites really did attract as this pair quickly fell for one another. But factions stood in their way. The pure-hearted Silverbolt believed Black Arachnia could be won over to the side of good and could become the Maximal she was always meant to be. But Black Arachnia liked being a bad girl and had no desire to change. However, when Megatron revealed his intention to alter history and wipe the Maximals out, Black Arachnia turned on him in order to preserve her own existence, and in the cartoon's third season, threw in her lot with the Maximals. Though it meant she could be together with Silverbolt, she struggled to trust her new teammates, and her presence among their ranks caused no shortage of conflict. But eventually, she would earn her place among them, and after experimenting with alien technology, upgraded herself into the form of her new 1999 Transmetal 2 toy complete with telekinetic powers. Black Arachnia's story continued directly into the sequel series Beast Machines, in which she and the other Maximals fought to free a Cybertron conquered by Megatron. Black Arachnia was upgraded by the Oracle supercomputer into a techno-organic form. Beast flesh and Transformer metal fused at the cellular level. But Silverbolt was captured by Megatron, who used his spark to bring life to the evil Viacon general, Jetstorm. Black Arachnia dedicated herself to rescuing her lost love, even going behind her teammates' backs several times in her attempts to reach him. But when she finally succeeded in freeing Silverbolt, she discovered that his time as Jetstorm had changed him. He was lost to his anger and desire for revenge against Megatron, and now it was Black Arachnia's turn to bring him back from the dark side, just as he had once done for her. With Megatron's defeat at the climax of Beast Machines, Black Arachnia and Silverbolt were free to be together again. But the end of the cartoon did not quite mark the end of Black Arachnia's story. In 2003, as part of the Transformers Universe toy line, her Beast Machines toy was re-released in a new orange and blue color scheme. The Universe comic book, available through BotCon, the official Transformers convention, told the story of how, after the end of Beast Machines, she was among the Transformers abducted from across the multiverse by the evil Unicron, and given this new form after being infected by a virus that reawakened her evil impulses. Fortunately, her old friends were eventually able to save her from Unicron's grasp. There had also been plans to feature Black Arachnia in the cancelled Beast Machine sequel, TransTech. In 2008, the TransTech Black Arachnia design was used by the Transformers Collectors Club for a different incarnation of the character, one who came from an alternate timeline where Maximals and Predacons were an impoverished underclass oppressed by the Autobots and Decepticons, in which she was a member of a resistance fighting to overthrow their cruel masters. This Black Arachnia's rebel adventures were later chronicled in the club's Beast Wars Uprising series of prose stories between 2014 and 2016. 
The stories gave her a new design, a toy of which was considered as a possible exclusive for BotCon 2016, but it didn't come to pass. A brand new incarnation of Black Arachnia was introduced in 2007's Transformers Animated. Like the Beast Wars character, this Black Arachnia was also caught between good and evil. She began life as the Autobot cadet Elita One and had the special power to download and copy the abilities of other Transformers. When an off-the-books mission with fellow cadets Optimus and Sentinel to an organic planet of giant spiders went wrong, Elita attempted to use her download power on the creatures and wound up irreversibly mutating herself into a web-spinning, venom-spitting, techno-organic form. Mistakenly believed dead by Optimus and Sentinel, Elita, abandoned and resentful, renamed herself Black Arachnia and joined up with the Decepticons. She would cross paths with Optimus again years later on Earth, their tragic history and feelings for one another complicating the conflicts that ensued as Black Arachnia, a scientist and inventor like her Beast Wars predecessor, sought ways to cure herself, from stealing Sari Sumdak's AllSpark-powered key to seducing the Dinobots into her service and collaborating with the evil biogeneticist Meltdown. In her final appearance in the series, these efforts extended to creating others like herself to better understand her condition as she mutated the Autobot Wasp into the techno-organic Waspinator. Had the show continued, she would have returned as the queen of a new faction of her own techno-organic Predacon mutants. The animated Black Arachnia toy was later re-released in the Japanese Transformers Legends toy line retooled and recolored to look more like the Beast Wars character. The comedic legends tie-in manga detailed how this new, goofy version of Black Arachnia worked in a club at night and in the offices of the Terracura Company with the other Beast Wars Predacons by day. Her boss Megatron had a crush on her, but she was a closet Transformers nerd who only had eyes for his Generation 1 namesake. It's hard to imagine that the Decepticon Spider-Woman of 2010's Transformers Prime, Arachnid, wasn't inspired by Black Arachnia to some extent. Arachnid transforms into a helicopter rather than a spider, instead adopting a third spider-like robot mode. But the key difference between her and Black Arachnia was that there was no spark of goodness hiding inside Arachnid. She was a cold-blooded killer, a rogue Decepticon who traveled the galaxy exterminating sentient species, and the arch-enemy of the Autobot RC, whose partner Tailgate she had killed during the war on Cybertron. After arriving on Earth, Arachnid renewed her feud with RC by targeting the Autobot's new human partner, Jack Darby. She also rejoined Megatron's forces and quickly became his second-in-command. But upon discovering a hive of Insecticons hibernating on Earth, used the beasts as her own personal army in an attempt to overthrow the Decepticon leader and seize power for herself. She was thwarted by RC who trapped her in a stasis pod, but in the show's third season she escaped and was transformed by a Dark Energon infection into a cannibalistic Terrorcon zombie. She was last seen stranded on Cybertron's moon, feeding on her Insecticons to survive. Both Black Arachnia and Arachnid appeared in IDW Publishing's comic books as natives of the colony world of Eucharis and members of the order of soothsaying spider transformers known as the Fate Weavers. Arachnid was expelled from the Order when she began experimenting on the brains of other Eukarians in an attempt to replicate Black Arachnia's ability to predict the future, and found employ in the service of Starscream, helping him reprogram the minds of the Combaticons. IDW have also just recently featured a Generation 1 cartoon-styled version of Arachnid in the pages of their Star Trek vs. Transformers crossover comic. From her rich, complex characterization and key role in Beast Wars, to her adaptation into animated, to Prime's reinvention of the archetype she represented, there's no question that Black Arachnia is the most iconic female villain the Transformers franchise has produced in its 35-year history, the go-to character for creators looking to fill that role for many years, 
and she recently proved her enduring popularity when fans voted her in as 2018's inductee into the Transformers Hall of Fame. Black Arachne has been a Predacon, a Maximal, an Autobot, a Decepticon, and more. But like she herself says, Even if I'm good, I'm still bad. And those are the basics on Black Arachnia. Whether you prefer Beast Wars, or Animated, or the Unconflicted Evil of Arachnid, tell me about your favourite take in the comments. Be sure to subscribe for more from the world of the Transformers, as this December we'll be tackling subjects from the Siege toyline and the Bumblebee movie.